Yes, 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 yes. Let's talk about the money game. It's money, 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 right? All I see is money. So, and yeah, that's real money. I like physical cash. It's good to hold some in your hand so you know what we're talking about here. So when I talk about the money game, my name is Gerald Peters. If you're new to my channel, I've written a couple books. I've written this book here, You Don't Have to Die Broke. I give you this book free. And then this book called The Money Flow is my stock trading strategy. Um, I might what you might call a holding company or a, a, a fund of sorts. I've kind of transformed, tried to transform myself into like a hedge fund. I make money with money. That's what I do every day. Every day I wake up, I try to get a little bit richer. I've been given the, the authority, the responsibility to manage the assets of my kingdom, my family. I'm the king of this castle, of this compound that I live on, right? Of all the assets that I'm on. And my job as the king of this place is to manage the assets. And so every day, it's my goal that the kingdom expands. It's my goal that to bring prosperity to the kingdom. And so I get to choose in every decision that I make. Am I richer and smarter or am I poorer and stupider? You get to choose. It's up to you. And so what you do with your money, it determines that. You as the king. And so here we are. Now, inside the money game, there's a couple things we can do. The money game is fractal. It means you can play the game on any level. You can play this game on any level. Whether you have $100, let me grab a drink here, whether you have $10 billion, you can play the same game Warren Buffett's playing. But what a lot of people like to do is they want to make this game super simple. It's not so simple. People say, well, should you own single family or multifamily? Grant Cardone says you should own multifamily. And so we get caught up in this argument of houses versus apartments, which is one of the stupidest arguments in the, on planet Earth. If you actually have an opinion on that, you're stupid. It, you, it, it, what's the best deal? That's the one to do. What's the best deal? That's the one to do. It's so simple. Or IRA versus Roth IRA, or all these little things that people try to make out that are black and white, and as if there's this, there is some right answer. There is no right answer. The money game is huge. There's all kinds of ways to make money with money. The easiest thing in the world, the easy layup, the thing that takes no effort is called a CD. A bank CD is part of the money game that takes no risk or virtually a bank risk, which is backed by the FDIC. You're going to get 1% to 2%. Next in the order would be a money market account money market. Now these primarily for old people or scared people. People, if you don't have your money invested, it's either you're old or you're scared and you're only scared because you don't know. That's what I'm hoping to do and that's the point of my books is to help you. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not any of that bullshit. You're probably better off without them. Trust me. I'm just a guy who went and read books, educated himself, and now for 20 years I've been playing this money game, stacking cash, investing it, getting dividends and, and collecting interest and coupon payments and dividend payments and royalties and rent checks. All that shit comes into me every month, right? And if you read my book, you don't have to die broke, you'll know what I'm talking about. Next would be CDs, money market accounts, and then the next thing would probably be an index fund. No, no, take that back. The next level of safety would be a government bond. Bonds. Now, bonds are a cool subject because bonds are a big subject. It's not as simple as people think. And often we think fixed income or old people. Not the case. There's municipal bonds. There's government bonds. There's corporate bonds. Then within the bonds, there's different levels and classes of bonds. There's muni funds, municipal funds. There's bond funds. There's tax-free bonds. All kinds of shit inside the bond world. This is the most actively owned and traded asset class in the world, bonds. There's international bonds. There's all kinds of bonds that will give you money. Now, you don't need to know everything about a bond. You could take your money and give it to a bond fund where the manager went to Wharton Business School, has an MBA. He'll know more about that than you ever will. You just have to be smart enough to know when to give him your money. And so we want to buy bonds when they're on sale. Makes sense? So, uh, oh, and then we got index funds. 
this is your vanguard. And there's a whole movement of people who think index only, you can't beat the market. These are, there's a lot of dumb people in the world, and, and they tend to be the majority. The majority of people are stupid. Most of these people are broke that are telling you this, and the other people who produce the stats or the information to prove all this bullshit, they make their money managing the stupid people's money. So, okay, they're in a little group together. So that's fine. You guys do that. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I beat the index all the time. Um, after we got indexes, we could put mutual funds, I guess, over here, right? And, 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 and we, have, we already said bond funds. Now we could step out on the ladder into what do we call uh, individual stocks. So just stocks. Within the world of stocks, we have different kinds of stocks. We have dividend blue chip stocks. That's a different kind of stock than a penny stock or a Chipotle's or uh, uh, what would be another one? Denny's or, right? or any number. Like every stock is different. There are different companies. They're in different sectors. Some sectors pay dividends. Some don't. An MLP is a different kind of stock than an AG&C, which is a mortgage REIT. Right? So in the world of stocks, you could spend the rest of your life learning the money game about stocks, the different kinds of stocks, and when to buy what kind of stock. That's all going to be based on the business cycle, which is interest rates going up and interest rates going down. The Federal Reserve slowing down the economy or heating up the economy. If they're heating up the economy by lowering interest rates, you want to own stocks. So right now, there's a whole lot of dumb people in the world, stupid human beings. They're dumb people. Okay? that are fearful of stocks. These are dumb people. The, in, the Federal Reserve is lowering interest rates, which means asset classes will go higher. If you've ever heard the phrase, don't fight the Fed, that's what that means. It means housing prices are gonna continue to go up and stocks are gonna continue to go up, no matter what, because the Federal Reserve, the government, has made it so. They, they've, uh, they've rigged the system and they control it. And when they decide to, they want it to come back down, they will turn off the spigot, they will start to raise interest rates, and housing prices will come down, and stocks will come down, right? So this is all part of the money game. So inside of stocks, we have all different kinds of stocks. We have blue chip dividend stocks. We have REITs. So these become separate classes. we got REITs you can invest in. And inside of the world of REITs, there's all kinds of different REITs. There's hospital REITs, and there's uh, mall REITs, there's... You know, all different kinds of REITs. There's REITs that just invest in stocks. There's all kinds of REITs inside of REITs. Then we've got business development companies. These are, this is basically the peer-to-peer -peer lending of business. This is, this is businesses that are too big to go to a bank. Guy owns 50 dry cleaners. He owns 50 car washes. He goes to a business development company and they loan money. They take our money as shareholders and loan it out to other businesses and they build a portfolio like a holding company, like I said I am. They build one and they spread the risk around and get us high returns. And you can get anywhere from five to 10% returns in REITs, anywhere from five to 10% returns. And then you got mortgage-backed securities, MBSs. Remember the big movie Big Short, MBSs, mortgage-backed securities. That business has cleaned up a lot, right? So the time to buy those was after the crash, of course, of course, right? So mortgage-backed securities will pay 10, 12, 14, 15%. And this is another area, part of the money game. So you want to make money with money? It's more than just real estate. It's more than just bonds. It's more than just stocks or index funds or REITs or business development companies or mortgage-backed securities, right? It's about interest rates going up and down. What else we got? We got MLPs. MLPs we can invest in, right? Your natural gas, you turn on the stove, gas comes on, you heat your house, all that stuff, the transport into those gas, the pipelines, the holding tanks, the trucks, all of that shit is comprised inside of the MLP space, and I want to buy that when they're on sale. So the trick to the money game is buying below value, collecting money, and then as the price it goes back to, some people might call this reversion of the mean. My trading strategy is kind of a reversion of the mean strategy. And when things get back to normal or to actual value, I look to sell some of my assets to lock in that gain that I've made so that I can deploy that money into other assets and then hold a chunk for the rest of my life. And I end up building my own holding company, my own portfolio of 60, 70, 80 things, all paying me money, right? You can't do this overnight. It's taken me 20 years. 
I've been at this every single day. So every day that I wake up, I have one fucking goal. I want to be richer today than I was yesterday, and I want to be smarter today than I was yesterday. Or you could choose stupider and poorer. That's up to you. That's your choice. So, I don't know. you got to ask yourself. you got to be honest with yourself. And so if I've covered things in here you don't know, you don't know those things, then how do you get to play in the money game? Where, see this? This is $10,000. $10,000. A lot of money, right? I need about another five, I guess. And that's what I collect passively. Passively. Meaning I'm not doing much. From all of these different assets that I've been doing every day for 20 years now. Oh, I still work. Still have a business. Still do all of that stuff. But this money's just coming to me because I built this little empire, this little money empire, this little honey empire, really, if you think about it, of assets. And I just take small sums of money, 2000 5000 whatever, and I push it in when the time is right because the game is fractal. You could be Warren fucking Buffett or Gerald Peters and buy the same thing, same stock at the same time, right? He, he, he The Oracle of Omaha, Oracle of Huntsville, same thing. Go to my... Now, obviously, he's obviously better than me. My point to that is, all I'm saying is, anyone can play in that game, regardless of age, race, or financial situation. You have an option to say, no, I don't want a loan. I don't want a car loan. I want to collect dividends from car payments, from car companies. Instead of having car loans, I collect money from car companies. That's on the other side of the cash register. That's a different game, right? That's playing a different game. And so you got to ask yourself, what side of the cash register do you want to get on? Where's your level of sophistication? Are you still struggling with stocks? Because some people are still struggling understanding a stock. It's not because they're stupid. It's because they're lazy. They don't want to sit down and read and actually understand, internalize the system. Repetition is the mother of skill, meaning reading, studying, and learning. It's about action. Action. Practice. I posted this yesterday about take action. Action is fucking practice. And when you practice, repetition is the mother of skill. So in order to get good at something, you've got to do it over and over and over and over. So one of the things that I teach people is stocks like Netflix, Tesla, these momentum companies that move real fast, Peloton, is to trade them. And so I track them. And stocks move like this. Stocks just move. And I want to buy them down here and I want to sell them up here. And people say, well, you can't do that. Bullshit. I do it all the time. I post it all the time. I do it every day. I post this shit every day. And yet, people say you can't do it. People say, well, you can't buy houses in my area. Bullshit. I buy houses all the time. Right? I, well, you can't manage your own properties. Bullshit. I manage my own properties. Like, all these things that I hear them telling people, it's all lies. Mo all, like... So much of this stuff is that people are putting out is such bullshit. That is just information that's true to them. This world, this money game, one of the 10 pillars of success, if you click my link, one of the 10 pillars of success is see the big picture. And the big picture is interest rates. Interest rates control everything. What is the LIBOR rate? Right? What is the rate... I'm not talking about your car payment. The bank sets that shit. I'm talking about what is the Federal Reserve window? What are they setting rates? If the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates, guess what's going to happen to stocks and houses? They start to go down. And if you know this, you could what? Maybe get ahead of this? You could trade opposite of it? So the assets that are going down as rates go up, you could look to buy them when they become undervalued, right? Because guess what happens when the rates go the other way? Those assets go up. And so you can be, get into what's called the business cycle. You could have big picture think this, and you could have 5,000 here, 5,000 here, 2,000 here, doing this, and you build this money machine. You begin to build this thing. It's not for everyone. I get this. What I'm saying is not for everyone. Being rich is not for everyone. It's about 7% of the people. But if you think you're going to get rich working your job, 
putting money blindly into some fund, some fucking retirement account that you don't know who runs it, you don't even understand the returns other than when you log in. That's about the extent of your money management. You are stupid. That is not going to happen. You don't know anyone who's done that. No one. You don't know a single person who's gotten rich doing that. Now, can you get rich from a job? No. But can a job help you get rich? 100%. Because I worked a job, and then I worked a side hustle, right? So yes, you need a job. Wages are honorable. Wages are how you pay your bills. But you know how you get rich? You know how you get rich? You know how you get piles of money just coming at you? This is not from work. I didn't work for this money. This money just came. It just appeared in my account. You know how that happens? It's because I took money from work and I set it aside into the money game, right? I put it into the money game and, and that gave me return, percentage. That's it. But I knew the assets. I controlled the assets. I picked the assets and I pushed the money into there and distributed it among different companies, different assets that were under value.